wonderful. Really, really wonderful. Welcome to whiskey.com, where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning. I'm the master taster of whiskey.com. Today we taste the Oban, 14 years old, 43% ABV. And Oban, well, not that popular in the community of connoisseurs, uh, but belongs to the classic malls of Scotland, which is, well, a series of six whiskies which are which belong to the most famous whiskies of Scotland, and I tasted already a few of them. Uh, Lagavulin, Talisker, Dalwini, Glen Kinchy, and Craigenmore. Well, those are the other five, and Oban is the sixth one. And Oban, I think, is the least often sold in these whiskies. Well, Oban is a quite small distillery, and it resides in the uh, so-called uh, town of Oban, which lies on the west coast of Scotland and which was, well, in former times, one of the ports where the uh, immigrants to uh, the New World left Scotland. Um, from the tastes, it resides, it's situated between those Isla malls uh, and the Highland malls, it has a little bit of smokiness, a little bit of coastal influence, a little bit of the sea. It's said it has some sort of saltiness. And, uh, well, the taste of the oven is a little bit different. Well, we see soon. Uh, the very interesting at this whiskey is the different bottle. It looks as if this bottle is a standard liquor bottle. But it's taller. It's half an inch taller than the typical bottles. And if you have a, a bar uh, cabinet uh, where all the bottles fit in, this one will not. <laughs> it's quite, it's a, it's a tall bottle. So look, there's something special here. Along the shores of Lorn lies a record of man far more ancient than that of any city in the land. The first settlers arrived on this mainland in 5000 before Christ and sheltered in the natural caves of a land then known as an ob. The distillery cave was once such shelter hidden in the Kecha Barain cliffs, which rise dramatically above the Oban distillery. I never know that. Yeah, I, I read that the first time. An ob, Oban. So the caves behind, there is a monument on top of the Oban distillery. I think it's for World War One or two. A huge, impressive monument. But below there are caves. <clears throat> the distillery is at the heart of Oban, gateway to the Isle. In effect, the town grew up around the distillery founded by John A. Hach Stevenson in 1794. Oban's attractive West Highland character, this is the uh, special character, reflects its location, revealing aspects of both the Highlands and the Island styles. Um, the taste of whiskies does not come from the region they are produced in. Proud of it, yes, but the microclimate is one of very small influences. The major influences in the taste is the social heritage of the people, the knowledge in the head of the people. They looked at different distilleries. How do you produce? And neighboring distilleries produced the same style of whiskey. They shared from time to time the equipment. They had the same coppersmith. Worked for them. So, uh, comparable tastes in a region come from comparable wisdom of the people. Not from the rough coast of Scotland. Uh, 
it's the people. Well, all is about people. Of course, there is a small influence of the climate, but uh, look at the island. Look at the Isle of Isla. The wind, 20 minutes later, the same wind which came over the islands reaches the shore. So it's the same air in which the cask uh, breathe. They're close to the shore, on, on the shore as well as on the islands. Where shall the different come from? Hmm. Uh, elegant and glowing, it marries the sea air character of the island malls to the soft, rich, fruity style of the highlands, creating its own rich tasting West Highland mall. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. Oban is the unforgettable West Highland destination on a journey around Scotland's six malt whiskey making regions. And then the classic malts. It's marketing, the same marketing for all, so they <laughs> spare money. There's a small bottle on the market as well in an assortment of whiskies. Um, but there are no longer miniatures. Miniatures had been, I think, too expensive for uh, the mother company uh, to spread on the market. They are well known, those whiskies. Uh, so they dare. What's here? What's the hell going on? Here. So they stopped producing miniatures and said 0 0.2 uh, is the smallest size available. And I think this is the, uh, the right way. Um, only four C, uh, five CL for tasting whiskey is too few to really get an a thought about that whiskey. So point one is the minimum I think you should have for well coming near to a whiskey over several evenings and 0.2 liters is well is quite the right amount to uh, to judge over a whiskey. Unfortunately, Oban is also a colored whiskey. So you can't tell uh, which casks were used for maturation. Um, 14 years old is two years more than the typical Highland malt with 12 years. Uh, how much color is in the whiskey? I can't tell. Wonderful. Really, really wonderful. There is a light, smoky note in the nose. It's not room filling, it's not intense. There is a, a faint, smoky note, and this adds complexity to the whiskey. And this mixes up with the fruit, the fruity style of the whiskey. And there's no salt and no sea. A little spiciness coming up, a little alcohol, so you, you see it's it's quite smooth because otherwise intense, spicy, oaky, uh, smoky aromas would, would cover the alcohol. But still, some al alcohol in the aroma. So it's not too strong. <sighs> hmm. I pressed it too hard through my teeth, so I spoiled a drop, I'm sorry. Full, intense, spicy, and, well, faint salt on your lips. Perhaps this drop helped me to find 
the salt in this whiskey becoming a little bit drier the tip of your tongue is dry and it's a well it's mixed it smooth on one side and and spicy aromatic on the other oh. goes warm down to your stomach the oh how it's called esophage yeah drier in the aftertaste oh wonderful complex more spicy than fruity complex smoke wonderful so this is one of the really good ones but it's too too different for the typical space side single malt whiskey connoisseur so this one well closes or tries to close the gap to the very peaty and intense Isla malts. So this brings you the idea how the malts on the islands are. <sighs> Wonderful. Oh, I think it was three years that I had a, an open the last time and I'm afraid I missed it. This should belong to, to every malt whiskey connoisseur's bar. I like it very much. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned. There's more to come and feel free.